In this video, I'm gonna show you how I set up my painting studio. Welcome to Paint Talk, the weekly show where I answer your questions on oil painting. So if you have a question and you want it answered, leave it in the comments section of this video and I just might answer it on next week's Paint Talk. Okay, so I get a lot of questions about stuff dealing with like how I set up my studio, what easels I use, my lighting, stuff like that. So I thought I'd take this Paint Talk episode to just show you around my studio and how I set it up. All right, before I show you around the studio, if you like this video, if you like this channel, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps the channel grow. Along with these Paint Talk Q&As that I release every Friday, I also have painting video tutorials on my YouTube page, so you can check those out as well. But if you're looking for full in real time painting video tutorials, I have those on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. And as far as all the materials and supplies I talk about in this video, I'll put links to where you can get all of that in the description below. Okay, now I know that everybody's studio space is different. Everybody is dealing with different problems with their space. I know for the longest time, my studio space was in my bedroom. My bedroom was tiny. It was an apartment. I had two roommates and it was the only place that I could paint. My easel was right next to my bed. I, I got paint all over my bed sheets. It was just cramped, but it's all I had and I made do with what I had. There was times when I painted out on a balcony that was like three feet wide by eight feet long because it was the only place that I could. So if you have a small space, don't worry about it. You can make it work. If you have to work on smaller paintings because you don't have a big space, that's fine. I would love to work on a painting that was 10 feet tall, but I don't have the studio space for it. You got to make the best of what you got. But in time, you can build and make your studio better and better. And you can also figure out what you like and what works specifically to your process. All right, let's jump to the easel first. All right, I got this easel. I really like it. I've gotten it relatively recently, uh, but I mainly liked this one because it has a wide range of adjustments that I can do. Like I can hold a really small uh, canvas on it really well and I can hold it very high. That was a, a big priority of mine because I like to stand a lot of times when I'm painting and I wanted to be able to raise it up, you know, eye level with me I'm about six foot. So having it eye level with me was a big thing that I was looking for. Also being able to handle larger size canvases. And I really like this one because it leans back, it like tilts back and forth really easily. It's really easy to adjust all the knobs and everything. You know, it's by no means like the best easel. It's not one of these thousand dollar easels, but it gets the job done very well. Uh, I do have another easel, my older easel, which is a great easel. It's just, I couldn't raise it high enough uh, to get to the height that I wanted, but I still keep it around because whenever I have like a really big piece on work on a you know 36 by 48 or, or 60 by 48 uh, it's good to have two easels to put uh, the canvas on to give it more support so I still keep that old easel too now a lot of times I'm painting from an image on a laptop or an iPad and so a lot of I try my best to get my reference image as close to my canvas as possible I either set my you know computer up on something so it's it's close to my canvas that way I can dart my eyes back and forth from my reference to my painting because that really helps you see the sim similarities, see the differences, matching colors, values, stuff like that. Um, I do have like a gooseneck arm that I use to uh, with my iPad that I hold my iPad uh, up on. I highly recommend one of those. I actually haven't been using my iPad that much lately because I like the image quality that I get off of my laptop better than my iPad. And I'm actually looking into getting a uh, like a big uh, you know, high definition TV that I can hook my computer up to. That way I can have it very big because I like to step back and look at my image. And if it's really small, like I can't, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, how I like to paint. And if I could get, you know, a big 54 inch TV or something like that, I'm going to be searching on Facebook marketplace for one of those, um, and get like a stand for it with wheels so I can move it around. But that's like the ideal setup that I'm working towards, uh, having. All right, now let's talk about lighting. I get a lot of questions about lighting. Uh, the main two lights that I use are over top of the canvas. And I like putting them there because they're easy to move and adjust. If I have glare, uh, I find that I get like the less glare when it's right above uh, the canvas and also having them be able to have them 
close to it will make sure that I don't get any dark spots on, on my canvas. If you're using some kind of like spotlight uh, to light your canvas, uh, be, just make sure that it's powerful enough or, you know, it's coverage is large enough that certain parts of the canvas aren't darker than others. Uh, also, try your best to have your palette and your canvas in the same light and the same color temperature light. Now, one of my lights, it's on this adjustable arm and I, I really like it because it actually has different color settings. It has three different color temperature uh, lights that it can run through. And most of the time I just try and mimic natural light as much as possible. And my other light, although you can't change, you know, the temperature setting of the light, it does have a setting in terms of brightness, which is, it comes in handy a lot. And with these two lights coupled with some soft ambient light, uh, sometimes I'll open, you know, the blinds to have like just the natural light coming in the room from the window. It's really good when you can have just soft ambient light in your studio it's like not very directional it just kind of coats everything evenly if you don't have windows or you can't really do that uh this softbox light that i actually bought for you know filming my videos acts as a great you know just ambient light to fill the room and not you know cause any really harsh shadows or really hot spots on my canvas or palette speaking of palette i have a few of them uh a lot of times I actually use a pad of palette paper uh, for my tutorials because I got to put it up right next to my canvas to be in frame uh, for while I'm filming. And you know, it's not glass, it's paper, so I'm not gonna get any reflection or, or glare, which I'm always fighting with uh, when I'm filming. So having a, a pad of palette paper is great. Uh, I put it right next to my canvas, like I said, for the filming, but even if I wasn't filming, it's still helpful it's really helpful to do that. And a lot of painters actually do that. And there's painters that have created palettes that are designed to be right next to uh, your painting surface. That way you can easily compare your colors and kind of see what they might look like before you put them onto your canvas. So that might be some for you to try. If you've never tried that, if you have a pad of palette paper, you know, you can clamp it up there. Speaking of clamping, the unsung hero of my studio are these clamps. I have about four of them. I I take them every, when I go plain air paint, I bring them. Like I always have, make sure to have a couple clamps with me because they are so useful. This is how I clamp my pad of canvas paper up onto my easel. It's how I clamp on my pad of palette paper. They're, you know, relatively cheap. They're just basic, strong clamps. I highly recommend them. They will be very useful for something, I guarantee you. But I'm not using the pad of palette paper. Uh, I have a, one of those box palettes and I actually got a piece of glass cut to put into it. I just went to a glass shop and had them cut a piece of glass to fit into there, which is very easy to clean. I can scrape off any dry paint really easily. And I, I just like the feeling of mixing on, on the glass surface. It's really nice. Now I do have a wooden palette. I have a really nice turtle wood hand, you know, held wooden palette. And it kills me that I was lazy and let so much paint get dried up onto it. And there's no way to really scrape the paint off without ruining the palette. So I got to buy a new one and be a lot more diligent about cleaning it, but I really like this one a lot. I like, if you've never tried like a really nice palette that you hold, like this one, I like it a lot. And when I can, I'm gonna buy another one. They aren't cheap, but especially if you're standing when you're painting, having your palette, you know, this close to your eyes, it just, I don't know, it helps me so much because also you can hold, you can hold it up. You know, you can hold your palette up and kind of like see the colors, you know, because it almost acts like a palette that is up there on the easel next to your canvas, like I was talking about before, but you can, you know, just maneuver it and just, again, like having it that close to your colors, that close to you is so helpful. Like if you're standing and you got your palette on a table, like in front of you, you still got, you know, the disc, like that's, you know, a couple feet, you know, it's a big difference than right here, which is, you know, can be less than a foot. And when I can, I really like to use that palette as well. But use whatever palette you feel most comfortable with, whatever fits your setup. All right, let's talk about brushes. I got asked a lot, you know, how often do I clean my brushes? And I always say the answer is never, really. One, because I'm kind of painting every day. And the main thing you want to worry about with oil painting and brushes is you just don't want that paint to dry on the brushes and ruin the bristles. And since I paint pretty much every day, the paint really doesn't have time to dry, especially when I use this brush dip. I'll put a link to where you can get this brush dip below. It is great 
because all I do when I'm done painting for the day, I'll clean the brushes as best I can on my paint thinner, you know, wipe them off the best I can on a paper towel, dip them in this brush dip and just set it down. This dip is so slow drying that I could leave them there for a week and any paint that's in it won't get dry. Like the brushes will never get dry. Keeps my brushes nice and soft. And I don't have to worry about cleanup, which is so helpful. So if you're lazy like me and don't like cleaning your brushes, I highly suggest picking up the brush dip. All right, now when it comes to paint thinner, I get asked like, how do you dispose of paint thinner? I don't really dispose of paint thinner. I'm always reusing it. I have a bunch of jars and I'll rotate the paint thinner out. Because if you let like a jar of paint thinner sit for a couple days, all the mud and you know paint and everything in it is going to settle at the bottom and leave you with some clean paint thinner that you can pour off and reuse. I'm constantly doing that so I'm never really having to throw away paint thinner. Just don't ever throw it away in a sink. I know don't ever do that. You probably have to look into like hazardous waste removal type thing. I just remember in the painting class that I took in college in the studio there, they had like a big, you know, like a red hazardous waste uh, can that we all put our paint thinner in to get rid of it and they took it and I don't know exactly what they did with it. But if you're gonna be throwing out paint thinner, you should look into that. So the paint thinner is the main thing that releases fumes into my studio. I use Gamsol uh, paint thinner, which is supposed to be the most studio friendly uh, paint thinner in terms of fumes, but it still has toxic fumes. So I have to be aware of the ventilation in my studio. So I always try to have a couple fans going, pushing the bad air out and bringing in clean air. I've also bought this air purifier, did some research and found that this air purifier is good for art studios and just to get those chemicals out of the air and always be cycling in fresh air. All right, so that's the key points of my studio. I hope you found this helpful. Hopefully you saw some things that maybe you could implement in your studio space. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below. Again, if you're looking for full real-time painting video tutorials or one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching with me, I have that offered on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. And if you wanna see what I paint on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting. Whoa, you're still here. You made it to the end of the video. That must mean you really like it. In that case, you should hit the subscribe button. You'd also probably like this video too. And this video. Please pick one. All right, this is getting awkward.